welcome to the social-engineer.org podcast number 69. 69. Dave's not here yet. No, Dave's going to be here. What's so he says? Ah, famous I mean, last words. Yeah, well, let's, <laughs> let's, let's talk about that for a second. Dave complains for months and months and months and months that I schedule every podcast during lunch. So this time I make it super important to schedule it after lunch. Well after lunch. And now he tells me he can't make it because he has meetings. And this is exactly why I scheduled it during lunch all these other months. So he says he'll try to make it by a little bit after now. So I just say, <laughs> just say, you know, so vague. It is. So vague. It's vague. It's vague. just no pleasing the man. No, no, no not, not, not that one at least. He's exacting <laughs> when he is unsatisfied. <laughs> in order to make him satisfied, it's he's so vague that it is impossible to satisfy him. It seems that way. Sounds like and an ex I have. I, I think I think also that he may be um, a little bit of a sore loser because we had that whole Twitter battle about Hornsby for hugs or no Hornsby. And the no Hornsby definitely was winning. Oh really? Oh yeah, I we can't get an update on that. Yeah, but when you when you if you go back to the Twitter and you, you you search for both of those hashtags, you'll see the no Hornsby definitely was blowing Hornsby for hugs out of the water. Uh, a lot of people were like, "Yeah, let's not do Hornsby." <laughs> and incidentally, you know, Hornsby's people still haven't responded to me. I asked their management to have Bruce on as a podcast guest, and not even a not even. A denial, not I mean, even a rejection. Seriously, Bruce, if you're listening to this, come on, man. Seriously, you want to, you want to. Uh, to be fair, Bruce Hornsby being a much uh, larger than life personality than any of us are. How many emails do you think they he gets requests for his presence? Hey, hey, that's not that's not the point. He got an email from Michelle Fincher. I think that should be pretty much answered right away. I'm taking this as a personal offense. Yeah, this is a personal sorry. offense against <laughs> Michelle. By Bruce Hornsby. Okay. No, it's a war. With me and the and Bruce only Hornsby. way to fix it, Bruce, is to answer this this email. It's the only way to fix it. No, no, no. Answer the email with a positive. Yes, yeah. I yeah. will be on the show. So, That's Bruce, right. I know you're listening to this. I know you are. So, start answering. Let's talk about our classes coming up. We have uh, Bristol, which has just a few seats left. And Ping, don't even say it because I already have the dates on the tip of my of my tongue which is may 11th through 15th in bristol uk uh that class is almost full but you know we're closing the the doors next week so if you want in you better you better do it now you should give them a compelling reason as to why they need to register for that class because because it's awesome your august event oh oh yes well because black hat which just came out is already sold out and closed up and they have asked us to open more seats, and we can't because we are literally like beyond capacity full in that class. So well, that's beer and sausage over in the UK. I mean, come on. Seriously, you got you you have you have um you ate every morning. Bangers and mash. Bangers and mash. Bangers with every meal. Yep. Yeah, and then she came home to a free angioplasty. But <laughs> I do. It's a man. <laughs> but you know, but but besides that, yeah, it was uh, that sold out. Black hats in August, uh, of course, and then we have one more class for this year. Public, our um, October five through nine Baltimore class. Oysters. Oysters and oh, great food. At every location, yeah. Yeah, but basically, Michelle just knows the class is based on food. It's true. <laughs> so if I say to her, if she goes, where are we going again? I go, Greek restaurant. She goes, oh, Baltimore. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Nice. I'm not going to lie. I know. That's pretty sad. And I did. I didn't even add this to the notes, but we have to talk about this. We just did our first advanced OSI for social engineers class. Mm. And um, it was today, awesome. It was awesome. It, okay. It, wait, wait, wait. Where was it? It was in California. Um, actually, I could say it because they, they said I could, I could say it. It was for LinkedIn. Um, we had a full class. We had over 20 folks in the class. We, we did two straight days of advanced OSI stuff and we got like straight five star ratings on the class. So I feel pretty good now talking about setting up some public dates for that. Cause we got a lot of people emailing. Um, I know this is a tease. I'm not setting a public date right now. We don't have one available. We are literally booked out until like after black, actually we're booked out till after Derby. So 
Basically, translation is he may make a decision for a class possibly in Q4, but more likely Q1 2016. That is Maybe. exactly yeah. what I wanted to say, <laughs> and she made it sound so much more intelligent than I could. So uh, Ping is now the official Chris translator. <laughs> I will say dumb things, and she will make me sound smart. That's always been the case, right? Yeah, that's been the case I mean, for the last 69 episodes How is that different than, yeah, okay. Well, you know, well because when you came around, Michelle, you were the translator. But for some reason on the podcast, I have to translate for him here. But you well, translate for him 99% of the rest of the time. She does. Yeah. But Michelle, so is, when I, we talk about... I think about, he needs as much help as possible. I do, which is why I fill my company with lots and lots of women that are really smart. Because I need as much help as possible because, you know, <laughs> we're basically just dumb monkey type people that walk around and say stupid things. <laughs> Moving along. Moving along. Okay, so Michelle's got like 18,000 speeches in the next like two months. That's what it feels like for sure. Yeah. yeah I heard she was fantastic at RSA. Fantastic isn't even the word. But we're talking... They gave a big, big room both days, and bo- two days in a row, her room was packed. Packed. Solid. I didn't catch on fire and burn up in the sun. She I did have. not. She did amazing. And um, and even though she did amazing, we had the most humiliating book signing of all times and all book <laughs> signings ever registered. Oh, you're going to talk about that. Oh. Wait, I want to hear about this. I did not hear about this before. I've never had a humiliating book signing when I was in charge of Black Hat. So I want to know how you define humiliating book signing. <laughs> well, we stood there, Michelle and I, <laughs> uh, dressed uh, at, at the book at the book signing area. Okay. And we were dressed up in our full social engineer garb. Everything looked professional, and we had nobody come <laughs> to sign books. But we did have people ask us where the bathroom was. Uh, we had no. people ask us um, where other authors were. They wanted to know when <laughs> Bruce Schneider was coming. <laughs> <laughs> and and they, they wanted to know when we were gonna be done so another author can step in and sign. So yeah, it was pretty it was pretty embarrassing. <laughs> we did actually get one guy and he was really nice. He was, he was really nice. And we tried to actually pressure three or four people um <laughs> into buying the book when they asked us for information like where bathrooms are, where they can get lunch. And they just basically walked away and didn't buy anything. Well, so this is the problem is that no one wants to carry books around on the show floor. Yeah. Right. And and that's and RSA is so huge. You know, Black Hat when it was at Caesars, you would just run upstairs with your books, right, and yeah. throw them back in your room and come back downstairs. But yeah. RSA is that's not the case, and that's the the convention hall is quite huge. And I they must not have done enough appropriate marketing either. Well, Sorry. part of it too. I mean, Chris is our dude. He's our publicity guy. So and and he wasn't there on on the first two days for the talks because he was teaching. So. Nobody wants to take an extra trip on a different day to go get a book sign. It was just not optimal. Well, it was it was still fun. We have a lot of great pictures of us choking each other out. Yeah, um, indeed. Uh, a lot of goofiness going on, and Michelle has the coolest thing ever. Can I tell you? Can I tell them about your cool thing? Yeah, sure. Okay. You can tell them about lots of cool things. Her dad made her <laughs> a little like kanji character stamp of her name. Nice. Her name in Japanese characters. And um, it's a little stamp. So when she signs the book, she can put like her own little personalization right into the signature. It's pretty dang awesome, if you ask me. It was between that and the Hello Kitty stamp. And, you know, I really had to think about it. So it's cool. Yeah. It's cool. So <laughs> the one guy that showed up got the coolest signature okay. ever. But <laughs> everyone else, yeah, that's right. I hope you enjoyed your Snyder <laughs> signing. <laughs> people who were asking. Okay, let's not. Let's not lament over that because we have other things. To, uh, by the time this comes out, you'll already be back from St. Louis, I hope. Not, I hope. I hope. If I make it back alive, yeah. Yeah, I hope you'll be back alive from St. Louis. Um, I'll be heading to Russia for PH Days, giving a speech there. And you are in June. This is kind of exciting. Michelle is keynoting for SC Congress in Toronto. Yay! Yeah. And yeah. get this, the code. Look, here's the code. To get your tickets and discounts and stuff, Fincher 01 or Fincher 03. What is it? I don't even know. But it's her last name, which is <laughs> yeah. the best part. Like the whole code bizarre, for SC yeah. Congress is like Fincher. That's right. They're gonna. It's it is to see how many people actually register with the code. They, everyone loves Michelle when she talks. Like everybody. Of course. I mean, Who wouldn't? 
Well, I don't know. I, just, I can't imagine anyone, but she, you know, you know how she is. You know I, yes, is. yes, I do know how she is. <laughs> do you know how she is? I, I actually do, since I've been working with her. Now, we discussed this, by the way, over four years, thanks to you. Yeah. Oh, my. Has, that, has it been that long? It has. Gosh, I remember walking down memory lane, and I was like, so there's this guy. He's looking for some help, but I don't know. I don't know if you'll <laughs> yeah. like him. That was when Michelle first moved up to Seattle. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So she has you to thank for ruining her life. Well, no. She, she, lots of fame and fortune, right? She's just written a book. I know. She's just been at RSA. Now she's going to be keynoting. And she loves what she does. She's a world renowned speaker. She's a world renowned speaker and trainer. She's an author and she's a trainer of, she's actually the only other trainer in the world right now for my material. She has an adoring adulation of many fans, I think. She does. Many. Many. And it was just, what, 14, 15 years ago, we were attacking people with spoons. Yes. Yes. Angrily. Angrily. (laughs) She was helping me hold down the fort. She was my right hand woman there, and now she's your right hand woman. Wow. She is. She's the right hand okay. of the whole company. Jess informed me that the SA Congress code is Fincher three. Fincher I don't know what happened three. to Fincher one or two. Um, they were other codes for other <laughs> conferences, I guess. <laughs> yes. So Fincher three. Okay. Okay. Here's a couple other things, guys, that we got to talk about. First of all, uh, DefCon is right around the corner. Our our call for papers is almost closed. Uh, contestant registration is almost closed. So if you want either one of those, you better get it in really soon. We are going to be closing them mid-May. And, and all of this can be submitted at social-engineer.org. And you look right up top at the SCCTF menu, and you, you, you hover over that, and you can't miss all the links to go do all these things. Um, our sponsors this year, White Canvas Group. They're like our bestest sponsor, whitecanvasgroup.com. They're pretty awesome. We do a lot of training with them. They're like social media experts. Uh, Fishline, which is our preferred phishing software vendor. We love those guys. I actually work with them now for the last uh, almost a year now. They're just really awesome. Yes. And, of course, Trusted Sec. Trusted Sec. We can't do anything without Dave. Dave's always there to support us. And there may be another one or so coming along the pipe. we got a few interested ones, so we'll announce them too. And for the first time, we're sponsoring something. We're sponsoring a, a kids' event to go along. Well, not, not actually go along with our kids' event, but we love when we see other people teaching kids um, hacking skills and things like this. So there's a great event on June 27th. And where is it again, Michelle? Chicago? Chicago, yes. Chicago, June 27th. It's called Hack for Kids. Uh, the website, you can check it out, is facebook.com slash H-A-K, the number four, and then K-I-D-Z. A hack for kids on facebook.com and uh, you'll see that we're sponsoring that and um, you can get some info if you're in the Chicago area and you got some kids and you want to take them to a really cool event uh, that's that's one event you want to keep in mind so I think that covers all of our bases now let's talk about our guest our guest is a friend of Michelle's she yes, was um, very good friend. reached out to him and hooked us up with him his name is Jimmy Doe He's a PSYOP officer at the Special Operations Command Central. Uh, so we're going to talk to him a little bit about his job, whatever he can tell us. But, of course, just what he has done with his career is going to make him a fascinating guest uh, from the psychological aspects for social engineering. So we'll get Jimmy on now, and we'll uh, we'll start this conversation. Okay, we're back with our guest, uh, Jimmy Doe. How are you doing this, this morning, Jimmy? I'm doing well. A little uh, sleepy. I just had lunch early. <laughs> we we so, forced everyone. See, every podcast, Dave is complaining because we make him skip lunch to do the podcast. And now we made you eat lunch early for the podcast, and then Dave didn't even show up today. So we're <laughs> we're really sorry about that. But uh, we'll, we'll, blame, okay. we'll blame Dave. So um, maybe to start off, you could tell us a little bit about what PSYOP is and what it is that you did as your part of your career. Yes, most definitely. Uh, before I go on to describe those things or uh, answer your questions, I just need to throw out the standard disclaimer here that my views today or anything that I say does not represent the views of the U.S. government or the U.S. Air Force. 
I do work for them. However, uh, I might say some things that, uh, I don't know, might be inflammatory to some people. <laughs> So. And incidentally, Jimmy, Jimmy specializes in inflammatory. He and I used to teach together at the academy, and our specialties were, you know, making fun of our freshmen. So, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of how we roll. It's what we do. Is that your PhD, is uh, making fun of freshmen? <laughs> no, what it is is building character. <laughs> yeah, that's what they call it. Right? There you go. Character <laughs> building. Yeah. Yes. Through tears. Yeah, I guess that cat is out of the bag. I, I am getting a PhD right now on, on the last couple months of doing that and about to stab my eyes out every day. That's why it sounds finish, so soul dead right dissertation. now. <laughs> well, congratulations on that. I'm sure you'll appreciate the congratulations much more when you're done. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to party like a rock star. <laughs> so what is it that PSYOP officer does? And what are the things that you got to do? I mean, the bulk of the U.S. military PSYOP units are with the Army uh, under the Fort Psychological Operations Group at uh, Fort Bragg. And we do have, I guess uh, a couple years ago, we started really amping up uh, Air Force personnel who are also trained in PSYOP. Now, there's, uh, I guess, some ambiguity surrounding the name uh, PSYOP or psychological operations, um, it's kind of gone back and forth between that PSYOP psychological operations to military information support operations or MISO. And it's been briefly renamed PSYOP or MISO in the last couple of years. Uh, I just don't know what they're doing. Maybe they can just make up their minds. Here's the official definition of PSYOP and then we're going to get into I guess, types of PSYOP and what I used to do or what I do. And basically, psychological operations are planned operations that convey selected information to foreign target audiences. And what our goal is, is to influence emotion, motivation, uh, motivations, reasoning, and ultimately the behavior of foreign governments, organizations, groups, individuals. And basically what we're trying to do is um, influence them or create a neutral, friendly, or hostile groups, uh, influence their emotions, attitudes, or desired behavior that supports our national objectives and our military mission. Now, what's interesting is because you talk about, you said individuals or groups, and I would imagine that influencing individuals is much different than in influencing a group of people, especially depending on the size of that group. Oh, most definitely. Now, so how do you go about, uh, you know, differentiating between the influence principles that you use or, or the methodology that you'll use dependent on the size of the group? Uh, that's a really good question. Now, I mean, missions can influence large populations, small groups, individuals, and those are our target audiences. And a lot of research goes into influencing and learning about these target audiences. We liken it a lot to marketing, uh, communication. I did a lot of studying and writing papers. Basically, as a team leader, I was in charge of certain areas of interest around the world. And our job was to understand these areas and get a general idea of um, every aspect of each location. You know, it's people, geography, weather, culture, education. And using our training in um, background in the behavioral sciences, uh, psychology, sociology, uh, leadership, we conducted analyses and created plans tailored to each area to accomplish certain goals. Now, going back to your original question about individual, large group, or populations, it's really dependent on what kind of message we we're getting across and what kind of resources we had at hand. What kind of factors will affect the success ratio of campaigns that, that you that you launch? Okay. Here's the primary thing is knowledge of the target audience. And there's certain steps that we follow in order to do that. I mean, we have lines of persuasion, uh, symbols, susceptibility, acceptability, and effectiveness. So pretty much as far as doctrine is concerned, I mean, those are the things that 
we'll consider and going down the list, uh, we'll talk about kind of, um, uh, what those mean. And so first one, you have lines of persuasion. Uh, what kind of arguments can we use in order to persuade whatever group or target audience we're after? And secondly, we have symbols. Maybe certain things, words, visual cues, icons, those things mean different things to different groups of people, individuals, or, you know, different populations. Next, we have susceptibility, sorry. We have to consider who we're talking to, who we're dealing with, and how how likely are they to be influenced by these arguments that we're going to use. Next on the list, is, I think it's pretty important, is accessibility of a population or individual or group of people. Uh, reach their people, and you got uh, things like television, radio, uh, internet, to be everything on the internet, blogs, video, um, newspapers, word of mouth, uh, people we call key communicators, you know, like the, the head of a village or the president or uh, someone who's really important, collects a lot of influence or pull. Um, I mean, we just have to consider all the avenues of communication uh, for our target audience. And then finally, we have effectiveness. It's, uh, I mean, you can come up with the, the greatest plan on earth, and if it's not effective, it's, if there's no way to measure how well you're doing, you know, the plan's not very good in the first place. Uh, it sounds like everything you just said involves what we call like OSINT, you know, like open source intelligence. So we're trying to find out uh, and I'll I'll use a company, you know, because since we're doing penetration testing from a social engineering angle, we'll see how a company um, uses and releases information. So, you know, do they use Twitter? Do they use LinkedIn? Do they use Facebook? Do they blog on their website? Uh, do they do press releases? How often are these things done? What kind of information is released? How many authors are there? You know, can we identify those authors? All that kind of information seems like similar things that you'd be looking for. And now, once we have that, <clears throat> the goal, of course, is to try to build a, a profile or a method that we can use to influence those individuals. Um, so our pretext would be handled easier, whether that's phone calls or phishing emails or on-site visits. Once you get past that first portion of getting all the information, like you just said, now, how do you decide on a pretext or how you're going to approach or how you're going to use the intel that you just gathered? That's a really good question. There are several different ways we approach missions, I guess, in the military. You got, uh, you got uh, strategic missions, operational and tactical. I mean, I guess think about it as a hierarchy of um, going from large to small um, and um, the bureaucracy or the red tape that you have to go through, you know, to, uh, write up a strategic plan versus a tactical plan. I mean, tactical is like boots on the ground. Hey, we're there. We got something we need to do. Do we have permission to do it? So a very quick turnaround, and uh, you're able to, I guess, work within the confines of your mission parameters or um, orders or whatever it is you're operating off of. Now, as we get higher in the hierarchy here, we're dealing with, let's say, larger groups of people or a bigger mission, that red tape increases and the timeline also increases. So let's say we're planning an operation on trying to prevent people from stepping on landmines. Or let's say, you know, if we want people to report uh, terrorist activity. A mission like that or a plan like that, an operation like that, it's pretty easy to put together. There's a set timeline. There's um, set goals in mind. Once we have the mission in place or we have some products that go out, I guess it's pretty easy to write up and execute. There's really not much that's going to change. There's not much uh, going to go wrong. But then when you have some kind of um, operation that's in flux, let's say operations on the Internet where you need a response immediately, uh, approval for missions with a shortened timeline like that tends to be a little more difficult. Really not a detailed plan in place that accounts for every operation like that. Yeah, absolutely. 
like most most people in our audience are going to be really interested in sort of how you create influence and and I think that probably relates not only to your population but to the media that you choose as well. I mean, a lot of the influence um, that we create is, I'm going to say, probably a little bit more direct because we're sending phishing emails or we're contacting people on the phone. And it, it sounds like you kind of have to run the whole gamut between um, being very far removed from your target of influence versus being right up on them. And th does that change sort of the methods that you pick or the media that you use? Yes, it does. I mean, when we do PSYOP, there's three different kinds. We have what we call white, gray, and black. So we have white PSYOP, which is overt. It's attributable to us. It's going to be our official statement from, you know, the government or various U.S. sources. True, factual. There's no mistake it's coming from us. Then you have gray PSYOP, which is covert. Black PSYOP is also covert. But gray is a little ambiguous. We don't know where the source is coming from. Uh, black, however, is very covert. You know, appears to come from a hostile source. Our involvement's concealed. Of course, if someone tries to pin it on us, we're going to deny responsibility. Um, based on those arenas, I guess what you said earlier about the methods that we use uh, really changes. Are you able to talk about any examples? I know you have to be pretty sensitive about, um, you know, specific culture, specific examples. Is there, is there any cool stuff you can do? Yeah, sure. Um, let's see. I guess I'd liken it to some kind of national ad campaign, right? So let's say we're going to try to increase the number of people who are going to receive uh, health care in a city or a village somewhere, right? I mean, what are some of the things that we could do to, um, you know, bring people into hospitals or clinics to get immunized? What are some things that, that you would do? Well, probably the biggest issue would be reach, right? Being able to target who you want to reach and, and getting to them, making a determination about the infrastructure and how people receive information, and then credibility issues as well, I would imagine, are a big aspect of that. Right. So... Here's uh, one example is, let's say a group of people out there, it is their way of life and they understand that immunizations are the work of the devil or some kind of uh, thing that they, they aren't supposed to do, right? How would we convince a group of people that it's something good, right? And then I guess you would have to work within sort of their frame, their reference, um, create messaging, well, understand who they are first and then create messaging that they respond to, create messaging that makes sense to them. And I guess a lot of that would just go back to understanding as much as you can about who you're trying to reach and what their values are. Right. You have to learn details about their culture, um, what they hold to be important to them, you know, what their symbols are, how we can make an effective argument. And then, like you said earlier, reach. Um, where are these people located? You know, do they watch TV? Can we hit them with a, uh, a campaign on the television or, or do they listen to the radio? Do they have electricity or even if they live in a city, you know, like what are the news stations they watch? Mm -hmm. What are the internet sites they visit? Capturing that information is pretty valuable because that helps you uh, target your audiences better. And is most of this done just using open source intelligence, like using the internet to try to, I mean, I understand the cultural emblems and things like that would be stuff you can research either on the internet or just through understanding the culture, but the specifics, the things like you mentioned, like that area of the world, does it have electricity? Does it have television? All those little things that influence a small group or an individual. Um, are you, you just using open source Intel in order to gather that, that type of detail? Uh, that is correct. It's uh, probably one of the most um, unglamorous aspects of our job. <laughs> Ours too. <laughs> Ours too. <laughs> I mean, uh, you, you watch TV or movies, and you know you see these people sitting in front of a computer monitor, going, "Oh, I got, uh, you know, I got a top secret level clearance, and I can do this and do that, and pull up satellite image data and stuff like that." Yeah, not real life. Yeah, it's, no. You know, the most we can wish for is you know, doing that, sitting in front of a computer screen or in front of books or articles, and they can play on the soundtrack of a really exciting movie. 
So, uh, so that, cause that's interesting, right? Because as you're talking, I'm, I'm listening and I'm saying, boy, this sounds, uh, obviously the motivations are different, but this sounds almost identical to our job. We, we do the same exact things. You know, the unglamorous part is digging through the dirt to find out how a company thinks or operates or releases Intel. And then we utilize that information to create scenarios that will influence them to take an action we want them to take. You know, that's like Michelle said, a lot of times, let's say the major part of our work is phishing emails. So we want someone to take an action, to click a link, to go to a website, to enter their credentials. So what's important to them? You know, or, and we find that uh, using open source Intel and then craft phishing emails that hit those emotional triggers and hopefully get them to take an action they shouldn't take. So it just sounds like we're almost hand in hand in, 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 the, in the things that we do. Right. And, you know, most of the Intel, I mean, almost all the Intel that we have or use, I mean, both of us, it's freely available. I mean, there really isn't much mystery in the actual information, but it's what we do with it that matters, right? Yeah. Um, yeah that's a great point. For the military, I mean, when we take those few key pieces of information and we combine it with our analysis, I mean, that's what makes it classified. So, like, like let's use a real-life example. Like, we have this, this podcast panel member, Dave. I told you about him before. And, right. you know, Open Intel will tell you, Open Intel will tell you that he complains about not having the podcast later because of missing lunch. <laughs> so then we, we change the time to suit just him and making our guest eat lunch early just for a day. And then he doesn't show up until almost halfway through the podcast. So what, what kind of Intel does that tell you? What, what, what <laughs> psyop would that tell you about this? particular per- oh dave you're here you showed up oh oh good to hear your voice chris i, I apologize uh oh. for, for being late i um took an i took a two-hour lunch today so i was uh <laughs> no, i'm just kidding yeah, yeah. i, I want to work there two hour lunches yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all do yes we're hiring, hiring. wait did you see what i'll do <laughs> yeah. uh, hey, let's talk, let's talk after Michelle. Um, Michelle, I'm teasing. I just wanted the uh, chicken buffalo pizza without the chicken <laughs> and the cheese and, yeah, the- and the cheese and the bacon. <laughs> oh, sorry, Jimmy, okay. but d- d- no, that's okay. You know, let's let's use this as an example too, because you know, human behavior rarely changes. It's pretty predictable, <laughs> especially Dave's. <laughs> <laughs> Showing up late to our lunches, that's yeah, yeah. part of the course, right? Yeah. Planning operations or, or anticipating behavior seems pretty straightforward. Um, so let's say working around a lunch schedule. I mean, <laughs> if we're going to talk to people or try to get a group motivated or try to persuade an individual or, or people, you know, timing matters. You know, when are we going to approach people? During lunchtime when everyone's gone or um, after lunch, when people are more vulnerable, you know, sleepy and and ready for a nap. I'm, I'm ready for a nap. <laughs> oh, no. no, no, it's <laughs> happening. Uh, uh, talking about not changing behavior, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> Jimmy, but here's the question that is actually really important. So, in this scenario, that's easy because we're all friends, despite how we sound. You know, Michelle, Dave, and I, and Peng, we're all friends, and we've known each other for years, so we actually know that behavior, and all jokes aside, we know how each other thinks and acts and stuff like that, but how do you do that on, let's say, a group of people that are complete strangers to you to get to that level of detail so you know their habits and things like that? Well, um, there's really no easy answer to that. I mean, the, the best course of action would be to just kind of embed yourself in, in that culture or a group of people, you know, to get as much information as you possibly can about them. That's probably the easiest because you have firsthand knowledge and experience. You know, we have limited resources, we have limited personnel, limited amount of time to do certain things like that. So right. I guess the best course of action that's most efficient is to do good research, do good analysis, you know, figure out who this person or these people are pull uh here uh nerd hat goes on i don't know if i ever take off my nerd hat but here i'm gonna i'm gonna put on another nerd hat here um maslow's hierarchy of needs taken Mm -hmm. from psychology right Mm -hmm. i mean people have different priorities 
cultures have different priorities, that organizations and groups have different priorities. So if you figure that out, things like that can help you kind of form a, a more smarter or better picture of who you're dealing with. Okay, and that could be applied. I, so now I get it, right? So that could be applied, and you may be making generalizations, but often, more often than not, your generalizations will be based on some level of fact, which even if you're in the you know fifty, sixty percentile bracket, you're gonna you're gonna probably motivate them to a certain point. And this goes back to our unsexy uh, work about you know just doing your research and, and really slogging through all the material when when we really be dangling from wires and doing the Mission Impossible thing, which, you know. (laughs) Right. And, you know, the thing is, like, we talked about making those generalizations and to see if we hit the mark, the most important aspect of doing this, I guess, doing good PSYOP is how effective is your mission or how effective is your operation. So you're fishing for information or you're fishing for uh, results, which operation, which uh, thing that you're working on works the best. Now to measure it, to see how, how effective it is. Yeah, I mean, you'll that'll tell you uh, if you're hitting your mark or not. Yeah, and and that so again, it's like just very very similar to our our industry because it, it's kind of funny. We we get these uh, people who uh, constantly ask Michelle. It'll be like every day of the week, people who want to come work for us because their vision of what we do. Is very much like Mission Impossible. You know, we're we're dangling from wires over like a, a trunk of gold or something, and ninety nine percent of it is sitting at a computer, drudging through gigabytes of data looking for that one piece of information that we're going to use for the attack. You know, and then Michelle spending a million hours writing a report on the you know trudging through gigabytes of data looking for that one piece so yeah, i myself have never like gone under a laser you know i'm just, I'm just pointing that out that's never been on an engagement well there was that one time no i'm just throwing it out there if you come over to our side uh we uh, we do lasers all the time um, hey, like, do i get a cat suit too yeah you, get a, you wear a cat suit and lasers. Hey, wait michelle I, I had you dress up as a nurse and go sing to a guy come on that's sexier than lasers <laughs> Yeah, but not a cat woman outfitted with lasers. Oh, seriously, you want lasers, Michelle? I will shoot you with lasers. No problem. Okay. Okay, we can work well, that out. Here, I got a, I got a semi cool story that is ends pretty anticlimactically. So, uh, <laughs> thanks for thanks for building that up so so good. <laughs> All right, so, we're in this country and we're out and about. It's our day off, and we're sightseeing. Do you remember that 80s movie? I think it was the 80s movie, um, Navy Seals with Charlie Sheen and Michael Bean. Yes, of yes. course. Yes. The classic. Okay. okay, so Navy Seals, they, they have these huge monster beepers that they're carrying around. And I think someone's about to get married, and all of a sudden all their beepers go off, right? Holy rad back in the day, but these days, <laughs> not so much. We're out and about driving around, all of a sudden, you know, our, our cell phones go off. We get called back for extremely time-sensitive se- time off revolving around Bid Laden, okay? Uh, back when he was alive, you know. Uh, needless to say, we drove back, like our lives depended on it. Um, action music is going on in the background. We got back, worked about three hours, or not three hours, three days straight, got no sleep. We got a lot of work done. They didn't go with what we had. Oh. Uh, yeah, that's... No, I was just going to say, like, you know, you spend all this time doing your analysis. You, you know, you sit in front of the screen, you craft whatever your product is going to be. And you have the mission in mind, working under the parameters that you're given. But in the end, you know, it's all based on timeliness and effectiveness. You know, in the end, someone said, hey, you know, I know you worked hard on it, but it's not timely. Or but to your butt doing this, but, you know, based on what we see, it's not going to be effective. So that's another unglamorous part of the job. And we had the same exact unglamorous problem in our field because we'll, we'll like, we'll do be doing OSINT on a client and then we'll have two or three people take a stab at writing a spearfish or something. And only one of them is going to get chosen, you know, and some of them people spent hours working on this and it, it just won't be chosen, you know, because either, like you said, it's not timely, it's not the best choice, it, it's not, not well written, whatever. But you, you know, you spend hours on working these things up. So it's, it's quite, 
again, another another interesting similarity. Yes, and people have to realize that it's the nature of the beast. It's the nature of the job. People have a certain image in mind when it comes to PSYOP or, I guess, types of operations, influence operations, whether it's white, gray, or black PSYOP. Ooh, cool. You know, hey, where's where's my kit? Where's my uh, black uh, tactical suit with all my gadgets and gizmos? No, it's not like that. You're going to spend a lot of time on these projects. You know, most of them are not going to work. You know, you might have a great idea and you want to come work for us. But once you get here, you're going to realize, hey, there's a set way to do it. You know, there's a, there's a lot of research and analysis that goes into what we do. It's not just what you see on TV. You know, it takes a lot of time. So you mean we can't drive a Ferrari underneath a moving plane to plug a serial cable in to hack it while hanging out of the convertible top? Uh, sign me up for that gig. <laughs> that sounds pretty cool. Yeah. No, so no. now what we've done is um, scare people away from both SIAP and social engineering. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know what will happen, Michelle. Only the real diehards will now stick, right? Well, give us that. Can can you share a success story or a, a a great example where everything sort of worked like it was supposed to, and and the end result was something that you can point to? I mean, surely. It, well, do you have anything you can share? I guess I should ask that question first. How about generally speaking? All right, um, seeing our products in the wild and the results of our operations, I think, means a lot. You're cornering the market in a specific region, competing against competing against all the other local products, right? And seeing your product, whatever it might be, uh, becoming successful, it means a lot. I mean, we get excited when, when, we, when we see that and hear that happen. Ooh, that does sound a lot like our work. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I, you know, of course, I can't say anything, but it's not even like a, a subtle nod or an eye wink to someone. But uh, people who are in our field who have uh, worked on these things, you know, if we see it come up, let's say if we see it come up in the news on a website or something or someone's reporting on a uh, specific happening or occurring somewhere, that makes us feel, feel happy because most of the time we don't see the results right away. You know, it takes a while for these things to take hold. Right. Yeah. And, um, it is kind of interesting to think about uh, when listening to you about how much similarity there is. Probably the big difference is the you know the intent and the the goals at hand. Our our goals are usually very short term. Like we're not usually influencing a client for any length of time. It's usually a very short term um, deal where you know we're just trying to help them see where there may be some vulnerabilities in their system, so they can be patched before like the real bad guys come and and actually exploit those vulnerabilities in their human network. And it sounds like your intent would be much more long-term in, in the way that it would work. Right. I mean, we do have uh, some short-term goals, like let's say oh, way back in the day in um, the uh, Iraq War, we had people uh, uh, dropping leaflets and things like that to get people to surrender. Um, that's a pretty short-term goal. You know, someone mm -hmm. picks up a piece of paper and says, Hey, look, you know, if, if we surrender, then we'll treat us right and no harm will come of us. And, and I think we should do that. You know, versus some, some long-term operation like, you know, influencing, um, let's say really young people over the course of their formative years so that when they grow up, you know, they have a certain set of, um, attitudes or beliefs about uh, the U.S. and our allies. You know, that's something completely different. Takes a very long time, and uh, may be unrewarding for the people who work on it because by the time they're done or moved on to their next job, you know someone else comes in and maybe it'll take another couple of years, and you may or may not see the fruits of your labor. Yeah, that's um, that's probably a little frustrating part of the job too for you there, huh? That's okay, but I mean, I, I love what I do. Well, I, I have a quick question, Jimmy, on, and, and I know you can't really identify populations, but Chaldini talks about how different cultures um, rely strongly on different factors of influence. And I was just curious if you can think of any examples where um, 
where you have seen a culture that is very different from, say, what would be influential in the U.S.? Like, can, can you think of any differences? Like, what would influence a person in the U.S., just generally speaking, versus a person in a, in a different culture? And I know that probably depends on the kind of campaign, but I, I was just thinking in terms of, you know, generalities and culture differences. It, it sounds um, like you, you did a lot of operations in the Middle East, so... I'm, I'm wondering if, if there was something that would be more influential there as opposed to, like, say, over in the U.S. Okay, let's start with the simple ones first. Like, um, is it a patriarchal culture or a matriarch, right? Mm. You know, that, that way, if you want to, let's say, get to some uh, young people and influence their ideas as they grow older, who is our likely communicator in that situation, really? Uh, someone's mother or father or grandparents. Mm -hmm. Think about the U.S. How likely are are we uh, in America to listen to? I'm, I'm sure other countries as well, but how? I'm just going to use uh, America as a, as an example. How likely am I or are we to listen to our parents when they tell us to do something? Mm -hmm. What's your answer? I know my. <laughs> <laughs> I know yours too. <laughs> I probably, yeah, I, I'd probably be less likely, at least depending on the age that I was right. at. I'm going to say no. I'm not going to say no. I'm not going to say Right? But let's say in another culture, you know, that let's say a culture who has, uh, has a strong family connection or a, a strong bond to a mother or father, you know, they're very likely to listen to uh, them or a close relative, right? And sure. Uh, here's another example in the U.S. or uh, other light countries. You know, uh, kids these days. Oh, those darn kids these days. <laughs> Who are they likely to listen to? Uh, have you heard of the Kylie Jenner challenge? Yes. <laughs> this is crazy. Okay. okay. It's something that you all can uh, YouTube later. Um, <laughs> uh, they're pretty impressionable, right? I mean, they're not going to listen to their parents, but they're going to sit in front of the computer and uh, participate in the Kylie Jenner challenge and post all their stuff on YouTube. I mean... Yeah, this is the lip suction thing with the jars, right? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> you haven't heard about this, Chris? No, they, no. <laughs> yeah, it's... Um, right. Teenage girls are wanting to get Kylie Jenner lips, and so what they're doing is they're sucking their lips into a jar um, to make their lips swollen, and it's resulting in, like, injuries. <laughs> Just grotesque outcomes it's, yeah, it's, yeah sounds pretty stupid like most internet challenges <laughs> <laughs> so you can see who has the influence here right <laughs> maybe if you wanted to uh sell a product or convince young people on what they need to do like sucking on a shot glass um you can have uh, the kardashians do it right <laughs> that's so but, sad uh, things about our culture right Right. So, so they would be, in our terms, uh, key communicators. You know, they, they have a lot of pull, they have a lot of influence. And if we can get them to broadcast or to uh, impart our messages to our target audience, you know, we'd be pretty successful. Now, in other countries, going back to your original question about different cultures, uh, let's say other countries are, have a very strong tribal influence. So they're most likely to listen to their tribe because their loyalty is fierce to the tribe uh, rather than uh, legitimate political figures mm -hmm. or, let's say, legitimate uh, law enforcement in town. I mean, if they have a choice between listening to legitimate authority figures versus people in their tribe, they're more likely to listen to people in their tribe. So that's something that, I mean, I guess you could see that here, but I don't think the loyalty is going to be as fierce, let's say, in America versus somewhere else. Yeah, so <clears throat> it's just a matter of finding, again, uh, um, finding what motivates and then utilizing that. So one of the questions we get often in the social engineer world is where you go to find that information on cultures that aren't yours. Can you can you tell us anything about that? Like where you would go to find out different things that would motivate or influence a culture across the globe? Yes, uh, you can 
speak to, I guess, uh, natives, uh, expats, and one of, I guess, uh, a big resource would be, I would say, marketing, marketing firms. Maybe there has been um, some kind of effort or efforts to communicate with people or individuals that uh, might be your target audience in the past, kind of riding on the coattails of other people who have done research in the area. Yeah, that's actually a great point. Yeah, it does. Is that just stuff that you for, search for on on the internet? Um, that's one place. I mean, uh, people who do intelligence or collect intelligence or analyze it, I mean, those would be the assets or resources that you would uh, seek out. Uh, and, and they would collect it mostly from open source as well. Um, pop open a web browser and type in what you want to know, and that's a good start. Now, if you want to get even more information, you know, that's when you approach uh, marketing firms, people have accomplished focus groups in the area. You know, you can say, hey, this company went into this city and performed a study with, um, let's say, people from ages 21 to 35, and they're in this region. Uh, they did the same study in these other cities with people from the same age group. You know, what, what do they ask them? You know, can we get in touch with these people and perhaps find out more of what they're saying about certain things? You know, mm-hmm. it could be as innocuous as, as uh, hey, we're thinking about uh, opening a, a new restaurant or we're thinking about opening a, uh, web cafe here, you know, what's the reaction from the, the gallery? Mm-hmm. You know, and if other people have done this work before, there's no sense replicating it at first. That makes sense. So again, it's just back to finding information online. That would make sense. Yes. And it's pretty surprising what you can find online. Yeah. Yeah. We have the same exact, um, same exact thing in our industry. People are always saying that. Um, yeah, so th- th- what's fascinating about this is just how related it seems to be, you know, how, how much um, similarity there is between our, our two fields, um, of course, intent being different. But one of the questions we always ask um, guests when we have them on is if there's any books or materials that they like to recommend, because we have a lot of people who are avid readers uh, that are podcast listeners. So are there any... It doesn't have to be on this topic. It could be any topic, just a book that you like or something you would recommend. Oh, my goodness. Um, let's see. Here's a good one uh, by Dave Grossman. It's called On Killing, The Psychological Cost of Learning to Kill in War and Society. Uh, one of the books that uh, uh, we use in our department uh, teaching at the Air Force Academy. I have that book that you're talking about sitting right here on my desk. That's why it sounds so familiar. Oh, because you're looking right at it. I'm looking right at it. Dave Grossman, <laughs> The Psychological Cost of Learning to Kill in War and Society. Yeah. I, I, I was like, man, why does this book sound so familiar? And someone else recommended it. So I have it I have it sitting here. Yep. Uh, yeah, very interesting read uh, so far. Yeah, okay. I, I was like, man, it sounds so familiar. But it tells you a little bit about my memory. Um <laughs> I don't know if this is even possible, but uh, sometimes we ask if there's ways that people can follow you or know what you're doing or not necessarily know what you're doing every moment, but you know, know. <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. that's just creepy. That's, yeah. just, that's just creepy. Is there ways people could creep on you? Yeah. I'm not going to give out my um, network information. In fact, <laughs> I'm going to cover up all my web cameras right now. Okay. <laughs> just in case. It's okay. We already um, got good screenshots for the podcast, so that's fine. <laughs> You can, Thank you. <laughs> you can see my casual attire that I'm wearing and my unkempt hair. But um, you know that's a, you know that's an interesting question too because just like we discussed earlier that you can find anything on the internet. Um, it's human nature to share information. It's human nature to, um, I guess, uh, put ourselves out there. It, you know, we're social creatures. Um, so finding information on people is it's pretty easy these days. Yeah, uh, for me. Well, you notice you notice he didn't give that out though. <laughs> no, and you know, every every guest is different. Some people have like you know public Twitter accounts and they don't mind sharing it. And other guests, I mean, literally, we had like one guest that said, "I won't even 
like sometimes we'll say, hey, is there a picture of you somewhere we could put on the podcast notes? And we had guests that were like, nope. No pictures, no nothing. <laughs> Just, say no, right. Jimmy. Just say no, Jamie. Just say no. Yeah, I mean, that's the long answer is, you know, I de- deactivated Twitter, I deactivated Instagram, you know, social network, you won't be able to find me that easily. It's just, you know, the less of me out there, uh, the better. It's just, I guess it's part of the job too, but it's just my personal preference, um, you yeah, know, being in the line of work that I, I do and doing this kind of research, it's uh, pretty scary what you can find out there on yourself or other yep. people. Nope, that's not a problem. Like I said, we ask and whatever the answer is, that's that's the answer. So you got it there, folks. <laughs> so now but you, you know just what? basically um, issued a challenge to everyone to creep on you. That's pretty terrible. <laughs> but but we're gonna we're gonna what do they call that SWAT? We're gonna SWAT you, you know? <laughs> oh. Yeah. I'll I'll be waiting for them. <laughs> yeah, no, just kidding. Never happened. I mean, maybe Dave would do it, but he'd probably send like Bruce Hornsby messages to your house or something like that. No, I, I, I will. Dave is still there? He's I'm just here. I'm just, here. I'm just. I'm just uh, silently listening to Bruce Hornsby in the background while we talk. So, so not paying I went on another uh, lunch break. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, <laughs> just quick. Just a quick one. I got a little hungry. <laughs> I love it when the guests join in to just get you, Dave. It just makes me happy. I, I, I'm not a big fan. I'm not a big fan. <laughs> yeah, no, it makes me happy. I'm. I'm. You know, awesome. Okay, Jimmy. Well, uh, we really appreciate you coming on the show. Very interesting stuff, and um, a little fascinating how closely linked what you do is to what we do so um some good some good things some good you know what's good for us when we talk about to people that have this is um it kind of reconfirms that we're on the right path as far as the way that we you know the way that we move forward with our with our work so that's that's good for us absolutely i mean if we were working hand in hand together i mean that you'd be surprised at all the similarities that we share um, unfortunately, you know, I have all these stories that I'd like to tell you, but people would probably, uh, not appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Certain okay. people would not appreciate certain information getting out. We, we understand. And, um, you know, I'm sure you like uh, to be on this side of the prison bar, so we're okay with that. So, <laughs> yeah. And, and trust me, just like we said before, like 99% of it is all open source. Uh, all the stuff that I, I do know you can. You know, probably find on the internet with a few clicks. It's just, um, you know, with a certain training and background and putting all the information together, you know, coming up with different, I guess, operations, uh, that's what makes it interesting. Again, thank you. Really, really appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. It was nice hearing you talk, and I and I apologize for uh, for joining late. I can't wait to go uh, recap the rest of the podcast and, and listen to what I missed. Sound, sounds awesome kicking the rust off my brain cogs here, trying to think about <laughs> good answers that uh, don't compromise national security. <laughs> yeah, because that would be bad. But, but it would be great a great rated podcast, I can tell you that. <laughs> so, you know, for the sake of good media, if you'd like to, you know, ruin national security right now, that that's okay. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's great. You know, I, I'll just talk for a couple of minutes uh, before before the black helicopters show up. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> All I want to know is, do aliens exist? That's it. <laughs> I want to know the answer to that too. <laughs> that would be great, Dave. You are living proof that they do. <laughs> <laughs> they walk among us. <laughs> that's messed up. That's messed up, dude. <laughs> uh, well, really, again, Jimmy, thank you for your time today, and. Um, We'll email you when this comes out, and um, you can promote it on your non-existent social media accounts. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, pa- I'll pass them out on strips of paper that I've cut up into go. little squares. <laughs> there you go. You can use this as one of your things next time. You know, you can be like, oh, yeah, check out this podcast on this website with little flyers or leaflets or something. Right. We covered a lot of bases as far as, um, you know, from OSINT to the actual attack vector. So it's uh, it was quite interesting. That was awesome. That's great. So, so probably the most important question, Jimmy, if if you were an avid fan of this podcast and you had a choice to either listen to Bruce Hornsby or to have other real music on the podcast, <laughs> would you choose Hornsby yeah, you know. or no Hornsby? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but would you choose Hornsby or no Hornsby? Now, Jimmy, think real careful I would here. Hornsby. 
Yes. You, you, may, you may want to rethink that answer. I, I think he said. I think no, he said, no. He said I, he would choose Bruce. No, I think he said he would not choose Bruce Hornsby. That's the way it's going to come out in the edited version of this podcast. Okay. <laughs> it's like um. It's, it's great music. It's like uh, great elevator it, music, isn't it? It's elevator great music. music. Nice elevator music. Music. You heard the quote. Hang on. Hang on. Thank you. You're my favorite person in the world right now. So, well, you know why he, you're his favorite is because he's losing the Twitter battle. Um, um, that is true. Uh, There's so, so many four four horns. Uh, no, 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 no. So, Jimmy, I'm, I'm disappointed, and unfortunately, the the podcast is going to come out, and I'm going to remove that uh, that that disclaimer, and it's going to say basically, I'm Jimmy Doe, and everything I say represents the U.S. government's opinions. Um, so, uh, you know, enjoy Gitmo. Um, really nice having you as a guest. Uh, yeah, bye. See ya. <laughs> okay, how about Dire Straits then? Dolphins of Swing? <laughs> uh, you know, Dave, okay, I'm going to give you this one, Dave, but you got one. <laughs> you got one. Hornsby. Hornsby. It's terrible. You know. If you have a choice between Bruce Hornsby and Cindy Lopper, this one, this one specifically. <laughs> Hey, that's, yeah, that is, see, see, we got. We, I, I like you, man. I like you a lot. But you know, I, I don't know. Hit that against um, mandolin rain and see what happens. Oh, dude, mandolin. Listen, I I, I fly Seriously? between mandolin rain. Seriously, I, I go between mandolin rain and Seriously. and uh, the way it is. So I, I completely agree. It's a very hard choice. The only thing is the the intro the intro um uh piano with the way it is is amazing. Uh, Yes. Um, okay, so how about Mandolin Rain versus The Goonies Are Good Enough? <laughs> Chris, you need to take control of your podcast, man. I, I, I'm, <laughs> it's I'm off so the disappointed rails. right now. I'm, I don't even know how I could speak. I, I, don't, I don't know if this is some kind of whacked out torture psyops or, or what, what this is. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not sure if this is. I don't know what's happening. I, my whole world is coming to an end. Exactly. Uh, and I guess that's it for the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> so, Jimmy, thank you so Thanks, much. Jimmy. Yeah, you're very welcome. I love you, man. Everything up to the last five minutes was awesome. Um, <laughs> anything up was a pleasure. To that time. All right. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, we'll see you. We'll see you later, Jimmy. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye. Hugs for Hornsby prevails again. Number thirty-seven. Uh, it's not. It's sixty-nine. It's not thirty-seven. Oh, sorry. It's at thirty-seven. You know, it's just because you're losing the Twitter battle. I think he felt bad for you. And I'm not losing the Twitter battle. Did you tally those up? It was like a ninety to ten ratio. Oh, yes, I'm like you, like, you, you gotta, gotta be like, smoking. You gotta be smoking. There were so many like no Hornsby's. It's unbelievable. That's not true. That's not, you're you're skiing with your own personal views and your whole exactly thing. Like I'm gonna doing. make the perception something different because I'm a social engineer. <laughs> when you can't change social media, you can't just delete someone's post. If you go through right now and look at my, you know that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go through right now and I'm gonna count count them up. So yeah, we're gonna need a total. We're gonna actually need a quantifiable number at this point because. You know, we've got skeptics out there. I Just am, saying. I am looking. Okay, hash. There was like there was like two people, maybe even four max, that said no against horns. Being like everybody else was so on it. <laughs> to everybody that supported me, this is for you. It's <laughs> a victory dance. Victory dance. How can you not like that? He's wearing a ponytail too. I would have been like a kid in the candy store. If he had, I, I, I'll be honest. I don't know if I could actually talk if he was on. Like I would be like one of those, those ones. Is like, oh my god, Well, that was the goal was to have it so you you had no ability to talk. That would have been awesome. Well, yeah, that, that would have worked. It would have worked. I mean, come on, listen. If you go to the first like few seconds of Bruce Hornsby where he's jamming out on that guitar or on the uh, piano and he's got the ponytail, he just looks like a cool dude. Hey, I'm into more. There's more right now. She doesn't have to put you in a better mood. Well, I, it makes me I, filled with rage, but I, I don't know. I'm... 
<laughs> I'm having a better day right now because I just listened to that right here. Hang on, hand. <laughs> and by the way, can you tell? Can you tell whoever edits the the sound not to cut my first horns and oh, stuff? I, no, actually, I, I did. I did. I, I told him, "Come on, man, seriously." I mean, you you cut he out cut like the funniest parts of the podcast. He cut eighty percent of my horns bees. I, I know. Pissed. Maybe he hates horns bees. I, I think he does, but still, I told him, "Come on, from now on, we gotta have you know like." If you cut this out, I'm gonna find you. <laughs> Hang on, this is. I mean, this is what's going to happen. I just want to play this real quick because this is this is exactly what's going to happen um, if if Hornsby gets cut out. I don't know what you want. If you are looking for ransom, I can tell you where to know money. But what I do have are a very particular set of skills. Skills I have acquired over a very long career. Skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. If you let my daughter go now, that'll be the end. It meant to be there. I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you don't, I will look for you. So, so I, I just want to say that, and I'm going to send this to you so you can see that um, I definitely won. There's no way. Because this... because we had, we. I'm, I'm sending this, this screenshot to you. We had... No Hornsby, hashtag, and no Hornsby, please, for those who are polite, hashtag, and we had Hornsby for hugs. And I won by a count of two. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through and collaborate this because I think your social media skills aren't as good as mine. <laughs> I'm sending you the screenshot right now as we speak. Where is it? Screenshot. Listen, but, but, so there is some good news out of this. I just want to throw this out there, regardless of where it goes. There's still a lot of people that, that prefer Bruce Hornsby, so I'm just going to have to keep playing it. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. We won, and it's proof right here with a Topsy social analytic. I put in all the hashtags, and it pulled I'm not, them up. I'm not, saying, I'm not saying anything bad about the people that, that, that said no Hornsby uh, or anything, but they also probably beat dogs. <laughs> You're not saying anything bad about I'm just, I'm just saying, people that said Nora Hornsby don't like people in general or life. <laughs> well, that's a grenade that we can <laughs> talk about next time. <laughs> Anyhow, as we end, I just wanted to bring up, I know Ping's not here. I wanted to do it while she was here. But Ping took a whole mess of titles for the International um, international Women's uh, Shooting Titles. And she won. She won a bunch of awards. We're gonna put them all on the website with the podcast notes. And uh, she won a nice big trophy and a medal. So we're really proud of her. For she was over in Spain competing. I wanted her to talk about awesome. it. But yeah, yeah. She 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 totally totally owned it. So I was hoping to um, to have her to talk about it, but she had to run because of a meeting halfway through the podcast. So at least she was here in the beginning, you know, to start off. Just she can tell us about it next time. Yeah, just saying. Oh, wait, wait, Chris, on your thing, you also need to do horns before hugs like that. Okay, let me try that. Let me add. Uh, and also horns be hugs and horns be hug. Those are the ones I saw. Okay, so let's just do yours first. So horns before hugs, horns be number four hugs. And then what was the third one? Horns be hug? Horns be hug, yeah. Are we still recording? Yeah. <laughs> okay. You better cut this part out. I better not. No, no. So okay. So so we see. I see nine nine hashtags total. Okay, nine times that that was retweeted. Hornsby for hugs. Hornsby number four hugs and Hornsby hug. Now let me do. Now mm. that, that's nine. Now let me do no Hornsby. You also got Hornsby four hugs. Okay. okay yep, yeah, I did. Okay. Okay. And let me see. No horns be please. And no horns be PLS. For those who were polite, you're not even gonna believe this. It's nine. So we are actually we are now tied. Yes! Yes, yes. tiebreaker game, tiebreaker so listen, game. Podcast okay. listeners, you have to help us out. We have to have an untie vote. We need you to vote. No Hornsby. 
No Great. horns be please. <laughs> I just want to throw out there that the Taken um, sound bit that I played also applies to anybody that does no horns me. <laughs> so anyhow, if you're interested, you can follow us on social-engineer.com, social-engineer.org, where you can get all of the uh, free frameware, this podcast, newsletter, other wonderful things. Um, um, 62. <laughs> 69. <laughs> Don't forget <laughs> Don't forget our Twitter account, social and uh, SOC Engineer Inc. or the other one, Human Hacker. If you're still on IRC, it's uh, irc.freenode.net channel social dash engineer. And until next time, guys, wait, remember. Wait, 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 wait. wait, 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 wait. No horns be please. No, no, no. Can I can I do a can I do a quick shout out for my podcast? Yes, please. Sure. I, I want to talk about it in the beginning, but go right ahead. Yeah, I want to definitely get you guys on too. Um, but we just started a new Trusted Site podcast, uh, the Trusted Security uh, podcast, once a week. It's uh, very similar to the ISD podcast. If you're familiar with that, check it out at trustedsec.com and then under podcast. And also. <laughs> so, that is not the outro music, people. It is not the outro music. Hi, is it? <laughs> okay, until next time. See ya. seem to recall any given name I see the footprints how they come how they go was that only a moment or many years ago my heart is gone No.